every time I read what it's about, I'm always just like, oh. Today we're getting cozy, we're getting spicy, and we're getting a little spooky. I think this might be my best fall book video yet. Welcome back to day three of YouTuber. I am so excited for today's video. If any of you guys are bookworms, you've come to the right place. I've got all the book vibes going this year, guys. I did research. Uh, I have many leather bound books and my apartment smells of rich mahogany. Looking up what books were coming out this year, I also have some books that I borrowed this year. I feel like I have a good repertoire based on whatever you like to read that's gonna make you feel so cozy and just so ready for the fall vibes. I find anytime that life really seems to feel way outside of my control in a way, my reading peaks, you know? I tend to read more when I'm more anxious, especially if I get into good fictional books when it just kind of pulls you away from life. So I have six books to share with you guys today. Like I said, they all range in in different kind of topics and different genres. For the last like eight months, I feel like I've been reading a lot of really educational books like Mindset or even Untamed, which isn't necessarily educational, but it was definitely more, I guess like self-development books. Whenever fall comes around, I get super excited and just super inspired to kind of dip back into the fiction world. I feel like I need a moment for my teenage self right now. I was that angsty teenage vampire lover, okay? I was a Twilight diehard fan. I even went as far as wearing contact lenses that made me look kind of like I was a vampire. Would spend my weekends not going to parties, but instead cooped up in my bedroom or taking bubble baths and reading Twilight cover to back over and over again. When I found out that this book was coming out, I feel like I had like a That's So Raven, but it was a flash back instead of a flash forward to just like teenage me and wondering what she would think if I knew that 2020 would come around and there would be a pandemic and I'd be living in Toronto, but leaving Toronto, but reading. Twilight from Edward's perspective and if even if back then I knew I was a youtuber that I would be sitting here making a YouTube video about books to read for the fall like she would be flipping yep and then when I un that so raven back to the present I'm also flipping and a couple of the chapters got leaked online and I, I read them back in the day I want to say folklore and this have been such pleasant surprises for 2020. So whether or not you guys were Twilight fans, you know, I don't know. I feel like there was like a trend where you either really loved it or that was trendy to like hate it and like hate on it. I recommend it only because, I mean, it's about vampires. You don't get much more fall than that. Hang on. There you go. It smells like a freaking egg roll. The second book that I want to talk about today is also a new book for 2020 and it is by Stephen King. If you guys have ever read any of his work, it's definitely from what I I would say like quirk, quirky, not quirky. It's different. Stephen King is an interesting fella. He has so many classics like It, The Shining, and this year he released this book. So this is a really good book if you don't want to necessarily dive into something that's like this big this fall. This is a collection of longer stories that are all kind of like eerie and creepy. So this one's called If It Bleeds. It even looks like Halloween, you know what I mean? It's got a black cat on the front. But I realized afterwards, actually looking at it, that it's also got a mouse's face in the middle of the black cat. And If It Bleeds, King gives readers four brilliant new stories sure to prove as iconic. One of King's greatest concerns is evil, and in If It Bleeds, there's plenty of it. There's also evil's opposite, in which King's fiction often manifests as friendship. So, this is the second book that I recommend for fall if you're looking for something that's got a little bit more of the heebie-jeebies, you know? So the third book I want to share today is a poem book. So I wanted to include different types of books for those of you guys that are different types of readers. Poem books are perfect if you, again, are somebody that doesn't like to sit down and read a book cover to cover. Maybe you just want to read a couple pages like every few weeks or so. And if that's the case, the book I'm going to recommend today is called Dirty Pretty Things. Now this is definitely 
a spicier book, if you will. Okay, today we're getting cozy, we're getting spicy, and we're getting a little spooky. This is definitely on the spicier side. It's poems that are, I, I want to say, a little naughty, if you will. Yeah, ready to be naughty. Like cinnamon spice or pumpkin. No, that's that's too, we're getting too basic. It'll, it'll definitely set a mood if you know what I mean. For instance, every time you take a sip, your lips wet with wine, I wish I was that glass. Little poems like that, you know, just moody. You're not in the mood, well you get in the mood. Not only that, this is just like a beautiful book. I know we're not supposed to judge books by its cover, but even just the title, Dirty Pretty Things, and just, it just, I don't know, I, I felt drawn to it, so. The next book that I'm going to recommend is an interesting, I feel like it's an interesting twist on a book. It's called The Power. It's by Naomi Alderman. All over the world, women and girls are discovering that they have power. With a flick of their fingers, they can inflict terrible pain and even death. And with this small twist of nature, everything changes drastically. Ambitious and provocative, visceral and page-turning, award-winning author Naomi Alderman's The Power at once takes us on a journey to an alternate reality that exposes our own world in bold and surprising ways. The bottom of the book says a fierce new power has emerged and only women have it. I don't know what it is about this book, but I'm kind of mystified by it. Like, I'm really curious to see what it turns into, especially because it's very different than any book I've ever really seen before. For instance, there's like drawings in the book and things of parts that are supposed to be included in the story. In the overlapping genres of feminists, dystopia, utopia, science fiction, and speculative fiction. I just... That sounds like such a mood to me. I feel like this is the type of book out of all of the books today that I would say is going to, again, I haven't read it yet, but it sounds like it's one that would require a little bit more of like an active thought or like an active consciousness with it because it sounds like it's got a lot of go a lot of symbolism and a lot of mixture going on and a lot of power behind it. And I mean, it makes sense because it's called The Power. This next book is a fun one. This is one that, especially if you're not somebody that wants to get into a fiction book or any kind of storyline, you're just kind of looking for something to keep on your nightstand and you're not really into dirty poetry, then you could definitely check out this book. So it's called Nightmares. I've actually borrowed this from my stepbrother. It says the dark side of dreams and dreaming and it's all about like how to decode your dreams but specifically how to decode your nightmares. For instance, the table of contents is like welcome to the world of nightmares, analyze a dream in minutes, nightmares that digest fears and anxieties, nightmares that confront you about you, nightmares that has true literal warnings, reoccurring nightmares, death in dreams, super intense nightmares, common nightmare symbols, and then the author's last words on nightmares. And it's basically just an entire book all about nightmares, but from what my stepbrother told me that it's also mainly about dreams, like it's not all about nightmares. I just find that stuff super interesting. If you're looking for something like that, this is definitely a good bedside read or just something to intrigue your mind on the fall nights or the middle of the nights when you wake up from a nightmare, which is the worst, or the mornings when you're having your coffee and you want to decode the scary ghoul or goblin you saw in your dreams last night. So the last book that I have to tell you guys about is another one that I'm really excited about. I feel like it vibes really well with the first book we talked about because of the pomegranate, but it's called Sin Eater. This I love the feeling of this book, the pages. I love when they have um, like uneven pages like this. You guys can't really see, but it just, there's something about it. I don't know, It's it seems like it's gonna be, I think this one might end up being my favorite, which is huge because like I said, I did a lot of research this year and I feel like I have a good collection of books here. But this one, every time I read what it's about, I'm always just like, oh. Ooh. The inside sleeve says she'll suffer for their sins, but will she keep their secrets? The sin eater walks among us, unseen, unheard. Sins of our flesh become sins of hers, following her to the grave, unseen, unheard. The sin eater walks among us. Then the very opening sentence says the handmaid's tale meets Alice in Wonderland. Vibe. Ready for it. In this inventive historical novel about a girl in the 16th century England who is sentenced to be a sin eater and finds herself caught up in a deadly plot at the heart of the Queen's Court. For the crime of stealing bread, 14-year-old May receives a life sentence. She must become a sin eater, a shunned woman, brutally marked, 
whose fate is to hear the final confessions of the dying and then eat ritual foods symbolizing their sins, May must make her way in a dangerous and cruel world that she barely understands. There's more to the story there, but I want to read the inside author's note as well because I found this so interesting. Sin eaters existed in parts of Britain until roughly a century ago. How many and who they were, apart from being social pariahs, is almost entirely lost. What we know is that they ate a piece of bread beside people's coffins to absolve their sins in a folk ritual. The story that I've written starts with this sliver, but is spun out of a fantasy. Some of the characters resemble historical figures, but this is not history, it's fiction. So it sounds like she took almost like facts from history and then wrote her own fictional story off of it, but the whole storyline and the premise sounds so cool. And I just feel like, again, that kind of has that that like chilling storyline, that chilling vibe, that kind of a little bit of a thriller, but also captivating. I am so excited to read this and especially to go back in time to like historical England because that's also just a mood. About that time, eh chaps? So there you guys have it. Those are all of the cozy fall moody, thriller, spicy, spooky books that I collected and listed for all of us to basically get into the coziest, most autumn, October vibe that ever existed. So if you guys wanna keep tabs on my thoughts on the books, I usually try to leave reviews, even if they're really short and small, they're usually really short and small on the books that I finished reading on my Goodreads account. I'll leave it linked below. And also too, I usually update my Instagram whenever I'm flipping from one book to the next, so you can follow either of those down below. I hope this got you ready to put on your reading socks and get cozy and just vibe out for all of the hours in between all of the other YouTuber videos. And aside from that, I will see you guys in approximately 24 more hours for Utober Day 4. Bye guys! All I require is to sit in the sun, read my book, alone. <laughs>